What is up? It's been a while since I've done one of these. Uh, I just wanted to get another VOD review in the books, especially after this uh, this awesome regional that happened. We will get into the match. I just do want to spend some time talking about the regional for sure. This was the bracket. I'm going to definitely refer back to this a couple of times. So I wanted to make sure you guys had a chance to see it. So before I get into the actual regional as well, just as a quick aside, um, the trip that I had out there was amazing. I stayed in Massachusetts. Uh, Savage Octagon hosted me, which was amazing. Um, just spending a weekend taking a trip to a new place is, is amazing. And uh, if you ever think about traveling to a tournament or an event or something like that, I would definitely recommend not just going for the tournament or the event. Don't just make it, a you know, the whole focal point of your trip. Um, especially if you're, you know, making, expecting to go far and hoping to do well, because that's kind of just the recipe for failure and disaster. I feel like, I think a big reason I was able to, uh, go into this tournament with, you know, just a clear mindset and, and a positive mindset was because I was able to, it wasn't like the, whole, I didn't have everything riding on my success of this tournament. I had already had a great trip leading up to that point. And so it's just sort of freed me to be okay with whatever happened. Um, and I think if I hadn't gone out to um, the States, gone to this regional and uh, had, hadn't had, you know, a whole trip and fun experiences and hang out with friends, hung out with friends and all that. I don't think uh, I would be able to to play at the level that I did as weird as that might sound. If you are going to do this, you know, resources and time permitting, obviously, and everything, try to make a trip out of it. Go with friends, meet up with someone nearby. If you're traveling far, it really helps. And I would say the same thing about Texas as well. I had a great trip there too. And, and it helped me play really well there as well. So um, you know, it's just, it's just awesome to travel as well. So take your, take the opportunity when you can. It's, it's super cool, man. This was a good regional for sure. I think leading into this, uh, I'm pretty sure the morning of, um, Mr. O, who you can see in the bracket there, we were talking and he'd asked me who my, who I thought the biggest competition was at this tournament. And honestly, I, it was even more than I had predicted because I told him, you know, Pangolin and Perula, the twins, Pangolin having won the most recent uh, regional and Perula being uh, a real force. I mean, she was probably who I was most scared of just because we had played a lot leading up to the tournament and uh, I did not win every game. Let's put it that way. So yeah, it, it uh, I, I knew it was going to be stacked just based on that alone, but there was a lot of talent that showed up that I never could have uh, seen coming. Like Barabarito made a surprise appearance. I don't think anybody knew that he was showing up. We had uh, a lot of other unknowns too. We had Sazzy who made it to the uh, the quarterfinals. Um, I'd never heard of her. I believe she was probably better known than I than I was aware of anyway. But uh, I hope, yeah, she did great. She played really well and hope she makes it out to Columbus for sure. Steve S, I had heard he was coming and he's been a monthly checkup regular and he's been great. And there were a lot of other unknowns. Uh, there was uh, Ty080, 860, excuse me. <laughs> And uh, he was a guy that nobody knew. He just happened to be there and showed up and was able to qualify for the bracket. So that was awesome. And uh, yeah, it was just a lot more talent than I even imagined there being. So it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Going into the first round, uh, qualifiers, obviously I qualified pretty highly. I got second seed. But some of the seeds, if you, I, I hope you guys can see this bracket well, but uh, some of these seeds were, were pretty surprising to me. Mr. O got a very good seed. Um, not, I knew, I knew he was pretty good cause we had played, uh, on the Friday and the Saturday and we'd had some pretty close games. He'd even, you know, taken some crowns off of me and I was like, wow, he's, uh, definitely better than I expected. And I think this was his just versus debut period. I don't think he's played pu versus publicly ever before this weekend. Um, and he ended up going really far, which isn't that surprising. He comes from a Dr. Mario household, of course. Yeah, I don't think anyone he would have, uh, even if they had known he was going to be there, I don't think anyone would have predicted him to uh, to be seventh seed. Yeah, he, he was able to make it to second round, um, and he he even got a win over Perula, who I honestly, I, I'm kind of disappointed that uh, she didn't really get to show off how good she really is. I mean, like I said, we played a lot leading into this tournament. She was definitely beating me uh, in a lot of games. I was, I'd say it was pretty even, probably like 50-50 between the two of us. I even feel like I lost to her more than I lost to Pangolin, who I also played a bit online leading up to the, the regional. And I was honestly more scared of her than I was of Pangolin in terms of playing who I wanted, didn't want to play against. So 
when I saw that she had gotten 10th seed and I would have had to potentially play her as early as round two, I was like, you got to be kidding me. No way. <laughs> Apparently, she had dropped a crown or two in uh, in qualifiers. And so she was just naturally seated lower because of that. I had heard that tournament nerves were a factor for her, which is a shame. And I really hope that uh, she can get over that. It clearly did affect her play a lot because when she plays online, like she's just a force. She came in third in the most recent monthly checkup. She has had great wins over great players and and playing against her is just like it's sometimes it's a marathon. We just you tend to have really long games that, that go the distance um, because it's really hard to top her out if, uh, if she can get past that opening. So it, it sucks that she didn't really get to get past round one. And I don't th think she's going to be able to play in any more monthlies this year uh, or until like early 2025. I think she'll be able to come back and play. So it sucks that this was kind of the, the one glimpse of that people got to see. I hope, you know, if you, you get a chance to check her out on uh, like the monthly checkup matches that you do, because uh, I promise you that uh, her play in this regional is not indicative of her skill level. She is, uh, she's really good. So uh, I definitely want to make sure she gets represented properly, accurately to her skill level. Um, yeah, like Savage said in the chat there, she's going to Antarctica for six months. So that's why she can't play. I didn't know if I wanted to share that, but it's up there on the screen now. So, <laughs> which is really cool. That's super cool. But um, unfortunately, the, the internet in Antarctica is not the greatest. So she won't be able to play in events or really have anyone to play with live either, obviously. So she's going to be sort of out of commission for six months and she won't, we won't see any of her. She won't be coming to Columbus, which is a shame. But uh, yeah, anyway, um, I hope that uh, she comes back and shows us all what's up in 2025 and can uh, really show people what she's made of. Moving on to uh, some other notable mentions here. Uh, as far as my own path through the tournament, when I saw this bracket, like I said, Perula round two seems scary. And then when Mr. O ended up winning that game, then I was like, oh man, I already knew that I didn't feel like he was an easy win already, but now he's beaten Perula, so I didn't know what to think. I do just want to mention talking about uh, my first round match a little bit. Claudia was a better opponent than I expected for someone I'd never heard of, um, which seems to be sort of like the through line of this tournament. Lots of people coming out, showing their stuff that you'd never seen or heard of before, which is always great. But uh, I think she was also just kind of like Ty. She was just a, 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 just a convention goer who saw the tournament and wanted to give it a shot. And she ended up qualifying for the bracket, which is crazy. If she's interested, she joins in the community and keeps playing. That would be cool. But uh, we managed to get past that. Going into round two, uh, we had to play uh, Mr. O, which was scary considering he just beat Perula for sure. Um, I had played him, like I said, on the Friday and the Saturday, and it was, it, w it was like back and forth. I don't know if he ever actually beat me in a best of five, but... It, we definitely had a lot of three twos. I remember that. That's for sure. And uh, now the wins never felt free. So going into that, I was a little nervous. Honestly, I really thought like, you know, if there was ever a time to uh, to choke it, it would be here. He could definitely take advantage of that. Uh, luckily, we managed to get through that, too. That was pretty clean. In the semis, we had to play against Rob Burrito. That was a nice surprise. I love Rob. He's a cool guy. I uh, didn't expect him to be there, so it was nice. It was a nice uh, surprise to see him again. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm just now getting distracted by the chat. Hey, Perula, uh, you're very welcome. Yeah, like I said, I hope you uh, come back from Antarctica and you show everyone what's up next year. Because, uh, yeah, it would suck if that's the lot, if this regional was the last anybody saw of you in a live setting. Just got to work on those nerves. <laughs> and uh, and I, I'm sure that, uh, that you can overcome it for sure. So Rob Burrito... He told me when he went up to the stage, uh, well, this was after the match, after we had played, and he wasn't like making excuses or anything, but he told me that when he went up to the stage, he brought his own controller up and then he unplugged the, the house controller, like the one that the tournament provided that was already plugged into the, the system. He unplugged it so he could plug his own controller in. And then somehow he just kind of forgot which wire was which. I think he was just very tired. And he plugged the house controller back in and started using it instead of his own. To the point that he actually left it up on stage after the match was over and had to go back up to get it to make sure he didn't lose it, which is unfortunate. I don't know if it how much it affected his play. I'm sure it must have at least a little bit. I'm kind of the person who really hates like using other people's controllers. If I don't have the controller I'm used to, 
like I, I I'm just so bad for that. I was like I can't play without my controller. I'm that person. So that's why I've got like my own controller in my little glasses case. <laughs> uh, I'm always like very like particular about that sort of thing. If my controller is like if I feel like it's malfunctioning at all, my whole mental game is off. I don't trust my own controller anymore. I start having trust issues. It's just it's really bad. So if I was him and that happened to me, I would like I would be really upset. I think. So it sucked to hear that that happened, but at least he didn't lose his controller. And uh, honestly, even despite that, I thought his play was amazing. Like, I feel like he really improved even since the last time I'd seen him in Pennsylvania in the finals against Pangolin. I felt like his play had really improved. And I heard other people tell me the same thing that like, wow, Rob really got better. And I know that he's a busy guy. You know, he's uh, a Mexican restaurant mogul and uh, he doesn't have a ton of time on his hands to uh, to put into practicing or anything like that i mean some he he makes the monthly checkups when he can but it's not that consistent because sometimes he just can't make it because he's just a busy dude and just doesn't have the time so the fact that he was able to improve that much given how little time that he has was really impressive to me i i was super impressed by that and uh man if, if he keeps on that upward trend and he's well rested and using the correct controller come columbus which i'm sure he'll be at uh then he's gonna be he has a chance to go real deep in that bracket then uh, after that, after we beat Rob Burrito, it was on to the finals against Pangolin. And uh, I didn't really know what to think at this point. Uh, I had dodged Perula. That was the big uh, the big obstacle in my mind out of the way. And uh, I didn't know what to think. I felt like pretty confident because we'd played a lot online and I felt like she was easier for me to beat for some reason. I can't really tell you why. Obviously, she um, had, went further in this tournament than Perula did. But for some reason, in my mind, I felt pretty confident. But she's like, if if Perula has nerves, her sister does not. Like she's like the most chill is not the word I'm looking for. She's just like the most like cool headed person, I guess is what I mean to say. Like she just is not phased by anything. She's not phased by the highs. She's not phased by the lows of tournament play. Like she doesn't seem to get nervous. She's really just kind of in the moment. She's just kind of there and she's chilling and she's she's playing her game. And uh, that's not easy. It's really not easy to do. Um, I don't know if she has experience in competition because it seems like she might uh, or if she's that's just the kind of person she is. But you even just being on the stage with her, you could tell like she's just she's just sort of matter of fact about about the whole experience, you know. <laughs> so I was kind of impressed by that because I feel like I've tried really hard to work on my mindset for competing and being on a stage in front of people and stuff. Um, I've competed, I've competed a lot over the years and, and it hasn't always been, it didn't just come naturally to me. I had to really get the experience and, and work on my own mindset because I felt like that was my greatest enemy at the times. And I don't know if she's done the same, but honestly, if you told me that she's just that kind of person, I wouldn't be surprised. It was very, uh, very impressive, honestly. Um, so we did play and that's the match that we are going to be reviewing today. So I won't get into that too much. Um, we'll just, uh, we'll just go to the video for that. Um, but I did end up managing to beat her and I, and taking the regional and that was cool. Uh, I was super happy with that. Um, I never come into these things thinking I'm going to win or anything like that. I was even sh like, I, I always say I don't like my chances and I'm not just being humble. Like, I mean it. I, I really was not sure about whether or not I could win this. I mean, I feel like even on fight Kate, you, when you play first to two sets, you often have matches where you win the first set and then you'll lose two in a row to the same person because sometimes things just doesn't things just don't go your way or you just make little small mistakes that cost you entire crowns and so in a best of just a best of five straight one set situation anything can really happen and i feel like you know you can get unlucky you can uh you know make a small mistake at just the worst possible time and and throw whole entire crowns and it can be brutal. It's a brutal format, I feel like. And so I never like my chances for that reason. And also, you know, I, I've played against these players. I know how good they are. And I know that, you know, no uh, no one's going to be a pushover. So I uh, I really didn't like my chances. But uh, yeah, it was awesome to win. It always feels good. I didn't have, I was already not really playing for an immunity pool spot. Maybe that helped too. I was just very like chill, not really worried about the stakes. I've been mean, about as low stakes as it could get. There was some cash on the line, maybe at that. Um, so that was helpful. I was just really happy with uh, with how everything went. And uh, just uh, beyond that, I was just really happy with the whole regional. It went really well. We uh, 
we had to endure some pretty loud pro wrestling going on. So for anyone who doesn't know it, if you watch the VODs on YouTube that have gone up, they've actually done an amazing job of cleaning out like all of the noise from behind uh, from behind this, the, the voices. Um, it's actually really impressive. I thought that those VODs were just like sabotage beyond recognition. Like there was no like we were just going to have to live with the fact that the audio is awful because there was literally like WWE wrestling going on just behind us. If you look in this picture, you can see the stage and the chairs there where where the where we were sitting. Um just behind that pretty much is the screen that everyone's watching the game on and then there's curtains. And just like very thin, paper thin, so thin you could literally, they were like translucent. You could see through them almost. Um, and then directly on the other side of that curtain is a gigantic wrestling ring. <laughs> and uh, they were very loud. Uh, the, the announcer was, was you know, being, he's doing his best J.B. Henry impression. Uh, the wrestlers were like yelling and screaming at each other because, you know, that's how it goes. The crowd was yelling and screaming. And then like, Literally, it was so jarring. You'd be sitting there commentating and you'd hear the stuff going on. And then all of a sudden you'd hear like a slam. And it was obviously the slam of like somebody like body slamming the other guy into the into the mat. But it was so loud. Like it was so loud. You have to imagine that like every bone in their body was broken after an impact like that. It was so loud. Like it was like it made me jump multiple times. I couldn't believe how loud it was. Um, <laughs> and we were just trying to play Dr. Mario just beside that. And on the mics for the commentary, you could hear all of that. It was completely audible. If you go to the Twitch VOD, you can hear the raw audio and you can hear how loud it was. It was literally right there. Um, so that was, it was super impressive that they were able to, uh, um, clean all that up, but that really did, uh, um, you know, definitely had an effect on the tournament. In the moment we were like, oh my God, this is like. As if they put us right next to like a wrestling match in the more we're trying to do like commentary and all this stuff. You know, we got rock band to the left, pro wrestling to the right. It, it seems to always happen at these conventions. I guess there's just not much you can do about it. But um, we got through it. And by the time the semifinals came around, they were to finish their matches and they they everyone had cleared out and and it was pretty good. So luckily it didn't impact the entire tournament. It would have sucked if the finals were were had to be played behind this like pro wrestling nonsense. <laughs> But other than that, like, I think that was really the only damper on the tournament and that was totally out of anyone's control. So other than that, it was great. Um, I had fun meeting everybody, I had fun meeting, uh, the twins for the first time. That was cool. I, uh, I have no complaints, super awesome tournament and super awesome, uh, group of people it's meant to do it with. <laughs> and I can't, and it's just made me more and more hype for Columbus. Uh, for anybody, if there's any doubt in your mind about going to Columbus, I know we're kind of getting on, but if you can do it, please go, please go to Columbus. It's going to be um, amazing. It's amazing every year. Every new person who ever goes always tells me they want to come back, come out, meet everybody, come out to the barcade on the Friday night. It's a really great time. It's just like a nice little social event. Um, and everybody hangs out in this bar and we all get to talk about Dr. Mario together and, you know, feel like you're among your people. It's, I just can't, express how awesome it is so please please do come out if you can make it i highly recommend it i know it's not always possible for everyone but if you can find a way any way please come out we'd love to have you um, but anyway let's uh let's get into the meat and potatoes here let's uh let's get to the game like i was saying i uh, i was really not you know super confident going into this i i was confident enough that you know i felt like I had a bit better game against Pangolin than I did against uh, her sister. So that I had that going for me. But she also just crushed everybody leading up to the finals. I don't think there was a single close game. So that's never great. And like I said, things can be very volatile in just a straight best of five. So, you know, I just sort of tried to think about playing my best and, and not worrying too much about what was going to happen and just trying to focus on doing the right moves and, and trusting the process. So... Uh, that was my mindset going into this, and uh, um, I mean, I don't really. I'd love to know if she has any sort of. Uh, she lost one game. Oh, she did. Okay, sorry, Savage. That's true. I forgot about that. And that was. You look like you were gonna make a comeback too. I have to say, um, you uh, when you won that first game, I was like, oh, she's figured it out. She's turning it around. The versus brain has unlocked. Like she's she's thrown off the shackles of speed, and she's ready to let her inner verses uh soul 
you know, out into the world or whatever. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. But you played great, too, um, especially taking a crown off Pangolin. That's not easy. And you made it all the way to the semifinals. So I think a lot of people probably would have uh, underestimated you for being like a speed specialist and being like, oh, she just plays speed. She can't play versus or something. Um, maybe nobody thinks that. I hope not. But uh, I could see why people would say that and they would be dead wrong because you proved that you can play. So, you know, practice versus a little more. I know you hate slash love versus, but <laughs> you should, uh, I don't know, especially going into Columbus. You know, if you give it a little more of a, of a focus, then I think you could go really far. So, you know, just think about it. Anyway, uh, let's uh, let's get into this. You have dead mother vibes. I do. I do have dead mother vibes. Hashtag right. dead mother vibes. So are we ready for our finals? <laughs> Okay. We ready, crowd? Okay, let's yeah. get to the let's, let's get to the opening here. In three, two, one. Also, please, I'm gonna actually turn the, the sound down on this. This is so. Okay, opening move. You said your speed brain wants a specific opening move, really bad, and I'm assuming it's probably this because that's like the super efficient thing to do. Uh, but I would, I think, like you could do that. That would be okay. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think the better move probably is just to set up for combo. Um, i also, I'm going to be reviewing my side. I know I'm drawing on Pangolin's board. I'm going to be reviewing my side of the game. I might look over to Pangolin's board to make a comment here and there, but mostly I'm going to be over on this side. But anyway, uh, I think that's just better. Um, double blues are kind of rare. Maybe it would be better to just hang it off the side instead, maybe, but I don't know. That could be better, but I think this is just kind of the safe play. Sometimes you just, you do just get the. The pills you need to make these kinds of combos. Um, I'd be interested to see what other people think. It'd be interesting if you got like a double yellow. I wish we got the double yellow first to put it here and just get a two a two move combo. That'd be pretty sick. But ah, uh, you can't win them all. But I think that's probably the move that we both do. Let's see what happens. Good. Oh, I love it. Oh, she actually does the speed move. That's crazy. <laughs> she does the safe move. That's awesome. Okay. Well, I guess uh, you can see where our, our thought processes differ. That's cool, actually. Um, I assume this yellow red's headed over to this side. But wait, did she get a different? Oh, no, this is a blue red. That's my next box. I thought, did we get different pills? That's crazy. Um, <laughs> no. So, yeah. Uh, I Like I said, I don't think this move's terrible. I think that early game, um, early game safety is probably underrated by most players, um, especially when you finally play against really good players who can abuse getting early combos and can really punish you for not making safe moves. But uh, I also think that going for combos early is really important. So um, here we are. That's why I'm, I prioritize this move. But I, I don't know. She could be right, honestly. It's hard to say. Anyway, let's keep going. See, Pangolin goes for the clear. Leviticus goes for the combo. So you can see that she ends up getting a f the first combo here, actually. And I want to see how I missed that. I love it. Oh. I guess I just didn't have a good place for this red blue. So I put it here in this spot right here um that's unfortunate maybe i could have done it the other way but then we get yellow reds so i don't know what did she do with her blue red i guess she had a better spot for it because of her initial clear yeah she just puts it over here and then she has yellow reds open but uh yeah that's really unfortunate i guess so you can see the two play styles differing right away and i get com garbage right away so as you can see i'm putting this blue yellow right here um, honestly, my, as soon as I get a piece of garbage like this right here, my first thought is this needs to be dealt with immediately. And when you're this high up on the board, horizontals are the best way to do that. So immediately, I, as soon as I see this going here, I know I'm going to be trying to get blue, yellow here. And then I'm hoping to get like, uh, yellow, red like this, and then probably a blue, yellow like this, if we can get there. And the pills don't always come. You could also put a red, another red, yellow here. If you had to, that would also give you a sweet combo. If you were to do it like that, um, I'm hoping for the yellow red here because it also gets a combo because these horizontals are also really good for doing combos. That's why I like to use them to get rid of like pesky opening garbage like this. This blue yellow goes here. We're hoping to get yellows somewhere like along this line. Um, we have platforms to do all of that and uh, preferably we can get a combo in the process. So let's see what happens. And the combo is. And I put the yellow blue here, I guess I could have put it horizontally. I did it this way, I guess because I saw the double yellow coming maybe, and I just wanted to uh, make sure I didn't block my center too much. That might be why. But I get it out of the way. Unfortunately, I don't get a combo for it. 
I did clear this because I think I just had to make sure that um, um, I wasn't blocking myself up too high. The worst thing that can happen and something I try to avoid at all costs is to have like blocked edges. So I just cleared this down to make sure that that didn't happen. It leaves me with a setup. I blew a red yellow setup and I gave myself a red blue setup kind of in uh, in response just sort of like as it resolves so i didn't really break the setup in that way if you think about it unfortunately i do get a red yellow here that i don't have anything else to do with which could have been used to combo but i mean in the moment it's really hard to see that kind of thing you just want to play it safe at that point so that's i mean if i had had a little more foresight i think i could have maybe gone for the combo but that's okay uh, i'll just put this down here and i'll get the, my combo and then i find another combo here so that's sick it actually works out great because now I have another combo set up where I have these two blues on top of this red and I'm probably, I'm not sure what I'll do because this red blue is a really interesting move because I could just go red blue like this and go for the easy double stack, kind of the obvious thing. Or I could try to clear this horizontal and I could put the red blue uh, like this and it kind of, uh, it's kind of, I mean, I'm kind of relying on getting a double red, but even if I didn't, even if I just got a red blue or red yellow, just to drop this and make this combo that might be worth it i'm actually don't know what i do here because i feel like i could i would be willing to make either move so let's see what i do i go for the horizontal okay i do think this is overall better i think the red blue play is like totally fine but this keeps the board more level and it also is gonna just clear out this weird horizontal situation and then when it drops it's gonna drop into a cross so that's kind of sick uh I'm sure i will eventually get that yeah a sick cross too. I love the body language of the players when they're playing. Oh, I should back up and explain that too. Yeah, so after that, the next thing is this this mess here is really not great. Garbage has kind of ruined it. So I, as soon as I got this double yellow, I was like, okay, we're going to start the horizontal setup and then we're going to sort of build up to it however we can. And luckily I got the perfect pills to do that. You just get like red yellow here and then the double yellow that's in the next box will fit like that. And, uh, that even resolves into a combo, which I wasn't honestly really thinking about, but uh, it thankfully does. And also this red yellow is just kind of well set up anyway to fall down on the red yellows beneath. So yeah, this horizontal is just like the play for sure. But even if I hadn't, I didn't, I hadn't even noticed that. I was just like, at least this garbage up here will be dropped down a little bit and I'll have a little more space to deal with it if I have to do it in a vertical way. Um, getting this, cl cleaning up these sorts of, weird early game situations is really important a lot of new players will have a situation like this and they'll think oh that's a huge mess and i don't know how to resolve it so i'm just going to go play over here i'm going to keep getting combos or whatever maybe even clear down the board and just leave this for the entire game and then it just comes back to bite you because even if you make it to end game it's just so much slower than if you could find a way to deal with it and keep things even um so that's kind of the thought process here luckily it turns out even better than i'd hoped for just because of how the the combo plays out but let's uh let's keep going I, I love the body language of the players when they're playing like what's what's the go-to move when a combo is dropped on them like what's their yeah. what's their gesture yeah what's i don't have a lot of combo game? opportunities yeah. here i'm what's setting up the red blues over in this way i'm just play for, playing a pretty basic yeah, double stack game here oh, yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Who does that? Mm -hmm. that was a misdrop that i just kind of have to resolve later rounds. yeah everybody's locked in every pill every moment every uh, and this kind of is not really super eventful, this combo that I just got, but I did want to point something out that I just thought of here. I use a red yellow to break this, and obviously the yellow here is going to fall down onto these yellows. I see a lot of people when they have these like double setups with like, let's say red blues, you have a red here column here, a blue column here. It's the blues are already loaded up. You don't actually need a red blue to, uh, to, to resolve this. Let's say that these yellows are actually blues instead. Let's pretend that these were blues. I think a lot of players are just willing to wait forever for a red blue to resolve this when a red yellow is perfectly fine just to kick the combo a little bit sooner. This red yellow, I end up putting it up this way, as you can see. But honestly, if you, I could just put it like this and that'd be totally fine. You get a little more drop time, but the, the yellow will drop with the blues. The blues will clear out and then the yellow will end up dropping right here onto this yellow down below. And uh, that's not easy to see, but... Um, honestly, even if this was like a double red and I had nowhere else to put it and I just wanted to, to drop this combo, I could even defend putting like a double red situation like this, or I mean, in this case, you would just put it like, like so, and just clear the whole thing out, but that's fine too. Like you have to, anything, whatever it takes to drop a combo as soon as possible, I think is totally fine. 
um, especially if you can put a different color on top that will drop this down. If anything, the red blue is like almost wasted if you use that to clear this now that the blue setup is already loaded, right? The double red could set up the red T down below. Yeah, exactly. Like there's, there's, there's really like no reason to hold out for the perfect pill. Sometimes you just have to even just make a pill of garbage and that's completely fine because it's worth it to get the combo earlier and to just get it as soon as possible where it could do more damage than if you give the other person time to clear out a bit or maybe even get a combo of their own and block you off. So I always try to get combos uh, and setups knocked down as soon as I possibly can. Uh, even if I have to make like a pill of garbage, at least they're getting two pills and I'm just getting one and I can position it exactly where I want in such a way that maybe I can make another combo setup or something. So it's, it's perfectly fine to do that. Every pill, every moment, every frame. Yeah. Speaking of locked in, wow. uh, Levitic Leviticus with a great, just took a safety pill, after this, moment, just cleared this out with yeah, the double yellows. I could have maybe put it here on retrospect. I could have uh, maybe put it like this this one and then had a setup but i think i just saw this kind of ugly edge and i just wanted to clear it away with zero drop time and i think that's probably fine too it's probably better the uh yeah i think the double yellow move here might have been slightly better but i don't think this move is too much of a mistake clearing out the edges is never really bad to me um as long as you uh keep things clean and you're not making missing a huge opportunity then that should be fine but it's possible that Setting up for a double yellow combo was probably better. Keep going. Wow. Uh, Levitic Leviticus with a great board right now. Pangolin stacked up with garbage. Oh, oh that's center. Oh, got an yeah, opportune that, quad oh, and we topped out over there. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, I mean, outside of the opening, there wasn't too much to talk about in that game. I feel like it was pretty straightforward overall. But I think that the opening is probably where there's the most to take away from, uh, if I could find it. We just uh, reset back to the beginning. Just this opening here where I got this like red garbage over here and this blue garbage here. Um, just using horizontals in the early game. You're likely seeing that both yellows in column 7 could have been taken together eventually. Uh, I'd have to go back and look and see what you mean. But yeah, just to finish my thought, um, just finding these sorts of horizontal situations in the early game to clean up these kinds of weird uh, garbage issues that often happen when you get early garbage against good opponents um this is how you get out of it um if you leave this and it just stacks to the top and now you lose your edge columns for the rest of the game and you have to clear out all these viruses all these viruses underneath would have had to have been cleared all horizontally well let's just start now while we're at the top of the board and we have some combo potential and we don't have to like build up a huge scaffold just to do it um i i love using horizontals to just fix these sorts of problems that crop up uh, and just deal with them very early because then you have so much runway left to just start getting combos and run away with the game. It's it's crazy. Anyway, uh, let's uh, go. Let me just go back to what you were talking about with this double yellow move here. If I can find it. Here it is. Where I just... Yeah, speaking uh, of locked in. Wow. I, th I guess what you mean when you say I could see I could get them together, I guess you're talking about doing this later in the game. So... That, as far as, this is like a speed move to me, and I think Savage would agree. <laughs> this is definitely like the speed move, and I don't have a problem with it in versus. Speed moves are totally fine, but I think I would rather have, I would take a combo, I would take a, like a, a virus clear slower. I would rather clear these two yellows separately if I could get two combos out of it. Um, Obviously, empty clears are always something you should really be doing either for safety or for like super efficiency if you have to but uh it's an underclear so trash on top makes no difference yeah that's true but there's really nothing underneath it to combo with so you don't really get a combo opportunity when you do that it would be purely efficiency which if you know the situation arises and you're put in the moment and you have you just happen to get the yellow double yellow let's say at the exact right time then that's okay but overall like i don't think about trying to prioritize stuff like that unless I think it's going to make a combo opportunity. So if there was like two blue viruses under this yellow shape, then, uh, then I, then I would consider maybe more likely to be doing something like that. But, um, to me, combos are, are the most important thing. And if you're doing anything like you should be trying to do it 
with a combo. And if you can't, or if you're not, go- you don't want to, or you're not going to, then you should have a good reason for doing it. Um, which would be, and then that's sometimes it's not just safety. Safety is definitely a good reason, but if you're trying to do like, uh, like a really efficient clear, like you get some crazy horizontal, that's going to clear three viruses with a single double pill or something, um, that you might've been really hard to get rid of. Otherwise I could defend that move. That's that like, in like generally speaking, obviously context matters, but, um, that's a perfectly fine move. I think that's efficient enough in a versus game that you would just do it because you do eventually have to clear all the viruses. So efficiency is important. Having a column where I don't have to worry about trash, I'm happy about it. That's true, but not if it's like a big pit in the board. The issue with that is that um, if you ever get garbage there, sure, it's not blocking anything, but um, it is causing you a lot of drop time. And against good players, if you get stun locked in that column, um, it's it's you could get stuck for, uh, for like 30 plus seconds. And if you keep the board more even, that's not really an issue. And uh, on top of that, even if it's not balling on anything vertically, Filling up, especially not a non-edge column like seven, like two to seven, with a bunch of garbage. If you get stun locked, for example, you are still likely blocking off a lot of horizontal opportunities, especially if you still have column eight viruses or something. Um, so I don't love rushing to clear out an entire column really quickly, especially when you're still like halfway up the board, just because you get into these situations where like, oh, I'm getting stun locked for the full four seconds, but the other garbage is falling in column three and it's way up at like the highest point on the board. Now it's going to cut off my entire left side because I got like five combos, garbage pieces in a row, let's say. Um, so yeah, I don't, I'm not, I we got way off on a tangent there, but, but yeah, I don't love uh, prioritizing efficiency moves like this at the expense of combos and stuff like that that's just how i think about it anyway let's keep going uh to the next game here game two uh opening pill there's this is an easy one pretty obvious so we're both going to do this we all know it if you've played verses before if you play a lot of verses this is probably just sticking it to like a sore thumb i feel like there's a lot of openings that are just kind of easy and the first move is just like very obvious and this is definitely one of them um you just set up the double stack combo it's the bread and butter if you get two more red blues, you'll get first combo and you just can't give that up. Um, so you got to take it. Maybe you could argue doing, if you want to be really fancy, you could go like this and then you're setting up for like a, this, to clear these yellows out to get a, a combo with the reds down below. But that's just going to take longer and you're more likely to get blocked off if you don't get the first combo. So I think this is probably the play and I wouldn't be, I'd actually be surprised if both of us don't make that move here. Game two. Yeah. Uh, interesting play here. I actually stacked the red yellow here. I don't know if I love that. Um, I don't, I, I, I'm breaking my setup here for this double stack by putting this red yellow like that. That's not great. Um, and I obviously, I think that's why Pangolin probably placed it here because you don't want to break your, your setup. Right. But I guess I'm thinking maybe I'll get like these yellows horizontally in some kind of combo with the blues. If I get like a blue yellow or something. Um, but I don't know if I'm assuming I don't get the combo here. Yeah, I just clear it out. Oh, that was lucky. <laughs> uh, I do remember this. I was like, damn, this is sick. I got lucky when I, when I got the double yellow just in time. Um, I cleared this out and then I was like, screw it. I'll clear the blues away now. And then I'll, I'll see if I can get like some kind of cross setup going on. And I get this yellow here and I flip it over. I, I see this setup and I'm like, oh, wow, that was works out perfectly. Sometimes it just happens for you, you know, <laughs> you you go for something. I, there was another combo. We'll get to it where that same thing happened, where I went for this weird setup. That's like you have to get a double pill or you will never resolve this combo. And it could it could be an issue. And uh, I end up uh, I end up getting it. So I think this is first combo, actually, when I get this sick cross and uh, yeah, and then we keep going from there. <laughs> playing a pretty basic double game, taking the double combos as they come. I don't know why I broke this setup here. That was a mistake. That was really not good. Did, I have the yellow blue in the next box. I know it's coming. I mean, I guess I just wasn't thinking about it and I didn't want to make garbage if I didn't have to. I probably should have just put this like here, I think. Something like that. And then I create another yellow blue combo or even just like, I don't know, like this even in the center would have been fine. Better than breaking a combo I'm literally about to get. So. That's unfortunate. I think ever if you ever break a combo like that, it's definitely a mistake. So weird that I did that. And I'll just, but I'll just get it. I'll just get blue yellows anyway, so it's fine. Not really punished too hard. 
Let's see. Oh, yeah. So, good combo from... Huh. This double red move I just made here. Honestly, I really expected myself to put it um, in these spots here. It's just like an easy double, right? Maybe I'm thinking this yellow is here, and if I do it this way, I have the opportunity to make like a drop horizontal or even a drop cross maybe. Um, that must have been the thought process there. <laughs> even I don't know what I was thinking on that one, but that's my best guess. I don't think I saw the double yellow and thought of that on the fly, but that's the only way that move really makes a lot of sense at least the cross setup with this gap here but and i don't even have to wait necessarily for a double red so we'll see how it Angle works out here, but column seven and eight a little yeah bit and then i end up getting the drop horizontal play, didn't quite get across for speed you, the play would be to try to clear those blues out horizontally but that's a little bit difficult if lev is going to drop some garbage and i have just no blue access and i'm board, just like man. geez this is brutal i don't even have yellow either so I'm just down to clear some red empty because I just need it to expose some other colors here. And now I have this horrible traffic light in the center because of that. But I think now I put this red blue here thinking I'm going to make like a horizontal, maybe get a combo here. Whenever you get these weird traffic lights, you just have to make horizontals. Horizontals are so important in verses because they just clean up situations like this and they happen to be like the best way to get combos. So it when you can do when you can fix your garbage situation and get a combo in the process that's just such a so powerful it just bails you out of an otherwise like really messy situation and i'm assuming the blue yellow is going on column five yet and i get the perfect pills to clear that out and i get a triple out of it so you never know what you're gonna get these finals is it gonna be the quick top outs and 30 second games or is it gonna be 10 minute slogs it's really hard to schedule these things <laughs> Excellent tea from Pangolin. You know the double. I'm still pretty starved on yellow. Play is on column one and two. Brings it straight down. Yeah, I just and didn't have that blue yellow. I don't know if that was the best spot. That is so nice. But oh, it does oh, help. Uh, it helps oh, Lev <laughs> out with a double charity combo yeah, there. I think right now this blue yellow. Now thinking about this during the garbage drop, I'm pretty sure I'm thinking blue yellow here. Um, but Unfortunately, I won't get a combo if I do that, because if I just wait till I get, get one more red, it'll turn into a combo opportunity. Maybe I wait for that. Maybe I think of something greedy here. Maybe I put it when this blue falls down. If I uh, let this play through, maybe this blue yellow is going to end up going like this, maybe. Or sorry, other way around, <laughs> like uh, like this. And then I'm thinking like, oh, I'll just like stack blue yellows up and then it'll drop. And by that time, I'll hopefully get a red over here at some point. And, and then I'll just have uh, some co a combo opportunity out of it. I'm not really sure how I played this, but let's see. I might have just taken the clear. I'm not quite sure. Let's find out. Yeah, I just took the clear. Just didn't want to mess around with that too much. I get an L. That was a nice find. Both of these players at the same exact level on their board. Lev with a slight virus advantage. I had another double yellow. That was actually a missed opportunity here. If I go back. This double yellow, I just saw the combo and ran with it, but seeing the other double yellow definitely should have just gone like that, and then I could have had a triple. But uh, I think I was just really fixated on getting the uh, getting the combo as soon as possible. And also, to be fair, it would have broken this little setup I have going on here, where if I get yellow blues, I can just uh, hang them over and get a drop cross like that. Um, or even like a drop T, which I might end up doing if I get like yellow, blue, yellow, blue, so like that. This blue will fall down here. This blue will fall down here and make a T. Um, if I ever get another yellow in this spot, if I really want to be greedy and hold out, I can get a quad out of this. That would be pretty sick. Um, so I, I think I was just really fixated on getting a combo because I felt like I was behind with all these weird situations I had to get out of. And uh, I was, you know, felt like maybe I was... I had a little bit of a messier board than Pangolin did, and I just wanted to get the combo as soon as possible. Something like that. Virus advantage. But I think that was a mistake overall. Wow, what what did I just do? Why, what? Man, I, I was not thinking of that at all. I was thinking, like, in right now at least, looking at this, I'm like, oh, maybe I'll stack blues, like, over here. Maybe I'll just do something like that and drop those blues down. Or I'll just take a yellow blue and get a double here. Or even just dropping it uh, oops, dropping it like this. Um, and that would get a triple. That would be pretty good. 
but instead I did some something weird. I guess that's just how the pills came to me. And... Ruin all of the plans. Oh, that is kind of what I ended up doing, I guess, but just in a different way. Really I'll get two doubles in a row. That's pretty good. See, this is a perfect example of what I was talking about. We just back up a second. This blue yellow, this yellow is already loading the setup right here. The play you made is the one I would have. Well, that makes me feel better. Thanks, Betty. <laughs> um, but yeah, this blue yellow, it's already loaded. I don't have to wait for blue yellows, and I don't really have another good spot for blue reds. So, you know, let's just jam. Jam it on here. Just get this to drop. Yes, I'll have red garbage at the bottom, but we'll get a combo. Post all your other moves. Hey, Betty, watch it. I have power here. I could ban you from this chat, all right? <laughs> Better watch yourself. Anyway. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, like, this is what I mean. Like, blue-red, I think a lot of people might look at this and go, oh, maybe I could put it here. But other than that, there's not really a great place to put it. It's like, no, just get the combo as soon as possible. As soon as you can. Blue-red will get you there. You don't really need to make it any fancier than that doesn't need to be a blue yellow it would be nice it would be nice if the board was you know if the, if the combo ended up being totally clean you'll get a little extra drop time but you'll get the combo way sooner and looking at pangolin's board i want a combo as soon as humanly possible because she's got a bunch of setups and she's high up on the board and if i block something i'm probably going to win the game it's a new plan yeah excellent and there she goes she cuts it down and another oh, the exact same level that's true yeah. shout out to the exact same yeah, I see exact same. I see him in the chat there. <laughs> I don't know if you were watching, but that happened a lot. <laughs> to the point that I'm pretty sure that uh, Savage said something at some point in the commentary, like, the same exact move. And I'm like, no, 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 that's not what you meant to say. Say it right. <laughs> oh, just see exact same. You're the best, buddy. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that just happened. <laughs> uh, and I corrected her. Oh, oh, that's I. I didn't even hear that part because I've been pausing and fast moving around and stuff. That's funny. Well, I'm glad you were watching. That's sick. I'm glad you get to catch the memes live. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, all right. So I have some garbage falling. Let's let it fall all the way here. Um. Now that this has fallen, I don't even know. I guess the blue yellow just goes here as just like a way to make a combo and maybe clear this red away because there's really no other clean place to put it. Um, this isn't a great setup to rely on, especially if it ever gets blocked, but I don't really think there's a better move here, to be honest. Still snapping those that's what I do. She's oh. Oh, look at yeah, but her that was pretty good. Yeah, that was a unique blue. Is there anything else I could have done with that? That was kind of sick. I guess, no, not really. But I saw that horizontal. I was like, yeah, just take it. Oh, look at yeah, but her situation, flat. yeah, not too bad, though. Oh, oh, that is the most... This might be the luckiest piece of garbage I've ever received in my entire life. What in the world? Like, just clears my drop T setup for me right after I just got a combo? That's ridiculous. I think I even make a face here when you see it wow, happen. another red-yellow... Yeah. <laughs> That's the face of, like, that was disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's it just be like that. Um, hopefully, hopefully I uh, can put this red blue or this double red here so I can red yellow like this and get a combo. But hopefully I see that. Hopefully past me sees that move. Let's oh, see if I do. Man. Yep, perfect. That garbage treating love very very well, but. Yeah, I had some. I should just want to point out, I had some lucky, lucky garbage this entire tournament. Um, I had a lot of. I never felt like anything went super unlucky my way. Um, it was just, yeah, there was a lot of moments I felt like that. So that always helps you in a tournament for sure. Um, I feel like there's a lot of luck in this game, and sometimes you just have to get a little lucky to win because you can easily get some unlucky garbage, and and it'll it'll come back to bite you if you can't resolve it. So. Uh, shout outs to Lucky Garbage. Uh, I'm a big fan. Would uh, would receive again. It's just got combo possibilities everywhere. That that yellow garbage on column eight, pretty rough for her. Okay. <laughs> I don't look super impressed, and I'm like, oh god. I don't know what I actually intended to do with this double blue, but I don't think I meant to put it here. It it's not that bad. It's maybe I just put it there and then realized like, I uh, I 
maybe this the horizontal I'm going for is a little too ambitious, but uh, <laughs> I'm just like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. I don't know what I would have done instead. Maybe just an empty clear over here. But now that we've made the move, we have to deal with it. And I'm like, okay, we have to go for it now that I did this. I have to commit to this move. So yeah, so now that we've we've done this, we have to commit to it. We can't just let this sit here and stack garbage on the top of it forever until I top out. So we're going to go for it. So we put the blue yellow here. This double blue does not look great. I guess I'm assuming I'm going to put it like horizontal, probably like this. Oops, maybe I could if I could use my tool here. Double blue like this. And then hopefully I get like blue, yellow, blue, yellow is what I'm hoping for. But I think even a red, yellow, I would probably use just to get this down as soon as possible. So let's see how this goes. I forget how this actually pans out for me. But still, if yep. things are clean. Yeah, and I would use the red, yellow, and I think I probably put the double Great. yellow here and too. Another combo for Pangolin. Yeah, and it leaves me with this kind of like not great situation. But honestly, this blue, yellow was not a great situation either. And at least this is like an even red yellow. I can do a double stack off of this and clear it down. Um, if the yellows build up, I can eventually maybe do like um, a, a blue lightning rod set up like this. So I, it looks messy the way this was left, but I think it's better than just ignoring this whole setup that I in this situation I put myself in to do that. Another combo for Lev. Lev's down to his end game now, and now it's all about getting last virus is cleared without issue mm -hmm. i end up doing that lightning rod and i have a yellow red setup over here now yeah perfect except for that booger on column a and it gets blocked I mean, and i just end up making this drop uh, on pangle inside it's anything as long fast. as it gets a combo it's not that bad yeah so fast I just want to comment here. Um, I the, Bidwell just mentioned like, oh, Lev's looking for the triples. He's looking for the quads. To be perfectly honest, I feel like maybe it's just a play style thing, but I don't really look for triples and quads. I don't set out going, I'm going to only try to get triples and quads if I can. You know, that's not to say I'll never extend a combo setup if I get the appropriate pills to get a triple if it's just going to take one or two more pills to get the triple instead but um gen i'm just trying to find the fastest combo possible most uh, most of the time um and that's usually a double to be honest um i don't i don't think that it's bad to go for quads and triples but i do think it can get you into trouble if it ends up taking too long at some point the amount of time it takes you to and the amount of time you have to wait to get a triple as opposed to just taking the double ends up outweighing the benefit of that extra piece of garbage. And I would rather have, I'd rather just take my chances and roll the dice on getting it in the right column if I can get it right now. So I, I don't really do that, um, but it might seem like sometimes I do because I'll, you know, the set, the pills will just come for a setup because I don't get the pill I need to, to take out the double or something. Um, and if you, if that happens and yeah, get a double or get a triple, get a quad, get, get whatever you can get. Uh, you know, don't pass up those opportunities. Absolutely not. But I don't try to go for stuff like that. That doesn't really happen. And I don't love that play style. That's just not me. I, I just want to get, I want to get garbage on their board as quickly as I can. In basically, basically any situation outside of like the end game and stuff like that, I guess. Even then, you should always try to be getting combos. That was outstanding. And look, she looks really clean now again. Now, of course, that I do say that that column eight is stacked up. But Still much here. Blue and yellow. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, very oh, nice. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'll find two quick doubles. Oh, my gosh. Somebody needs to clip that right now. Like, clip. And, please and, clip and, that. And, you know, sometimes when I set up the horizontal here, I forget. Did I? I guess I did this as like. Oh, I'll clear these double reds away. Please. And then this red goes here, hoping that I, cause it'll leave me a space to make it a combo. And now I just need red, blue. I guess the double blue, I'm assuming, either goes here or here. Either just to set up a combo one way or the other. Let's see. And, you know, oh, it goes here. Well, that's the same idea. Sometimes when I, when I do a move like that, I'm all excited. Oh, that was not good. I don't know why I did this. This should have just gone like, this yellow blue should have just gone like this, I think. Just set up another weird combo setup or something while you're holding out for this red blue. I think I panicked. This is not a good move. This move doesn't make any sense. I think I was trying to get it like I, at the last minute I went, oh, I want to do this. And then I messed it up. <laughs> so that's unfortunate. But I, I, let's see how I deal with that, I guess. 
Oh yeah. She just barely smirks. She is a killer. I had one move where I got really yeah. excited this yeah. tournament. I'll oh, take my next combo. Now oh, this looks really awkward. At least at least I'll have a uh, setup here, and I just take my combo as soon as possible. And this is a game now. The sudden Lev. This garbage helps me out quite well. Every single red yellow seems to drop a red yellow combo right for Lev. Yeah, like I said, it happened a lot this tournament. And and Lev's no longer free and clear. Struggling to find like a setup to knock down here. Double opportunity. Oh, that was sick. I saw that. I think you see my eyebrows go up. <laughs> this blue falls and I'm like, okay, I got a red blue here. That's interesting. But then I realize I have a double yellow and I see this blue clear out and I'm like, oh shit, that's sick. Let's get a, let's get across. Let's fucking go. It doesn't even break my red yellows over here. That's awesome. <laughs> so there we go. He gets the seven and eight. I just felt like I got a lot of garbage like that this tournament. There we go. It's all gone. Yeah. So not bad at all. That column one, a little bit tricky because you're Set in up the cross, and then I end up getting this. And then I, like, I need to reset up the cross for sure. So put it right here in case I don't get the double blue. Oh. And this gets covered off. Do I find a different way to deal with it? Mm-hmm. Uh, that combo didn't seem great. This isn't bad. I mean, I do get a double, but clearly, I mean, I should have... Well... I mean, I was thinking I should have just done this because then I would have gotten the drop cross. I would have had a quad, but it would leave this garbage here kind of awkwardly. I actually trying to think of how, what it would look like at the end, if it would line up with maybe this, if these reds here line up with this red virus by the end of it, but I don't think so. I guess it would just end up where the blues are because the blues would clear out, but the yellow would still be there on this level here. And then you get double red here, and then maybe you have like a, a de-sandwich opportunity. I guess I could have done that. I guess that wouldn't have been so bad, actually. But I wasn't looking that far ahead at all. So I think this move is fine. Maybe the, the drop cross is just better because it's a sick quad, but this is pretty close, I think. Oops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, drop cross. And I ended up getting there. it. Now I have another double opportunity this way, so it's not so bad. With this red, he's able to drop down that yellow. Make move, a little combo. Is that the move on column one to de sandwich, you think? The red virus? Could or be. Just take it, Could just be. drill it down. Uh, either, either way, but getting that we'll combo. Take that combo. Yeah, penguins oh. all of a sudden. Double red to column one, I'm assuming. Yeah. yeah that red in the center. Oh, whoa. I guess I was just trying to get to the viruses to get my, this end game in place, but the three it is what it is. It, that would have been the play that she wanted to make. But. Yeah, I'm sure there was something better here, but I end up getting the fat log set up, and it's no, 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 whatever. Get the D sandwich here with the yellow, probably. I love the savage thought I was gonna get the D sandwich here. Like again, such a speed move. <laughs> uh, it, it it wouldn't have been bad either, but honestly, this red already is set up to be cleared anyway. So I felt like surely we're gonna get the fat log if we can, and we can get the uh, we can get the the combo opportunity at the same time. That seemed better to me. I just have to get the correct pill, oh, and I do get it. Yeah. Okay. Just needs one more red, and the good thing and is now I have one red left. Drops on top of column one. Wow, he get under cleared, but yeah. nice. Might seem like a combo is like not super relevant at that point of the game, especially when you're that deep in end game. But uh, I mean, I think it's better to be on that edge, like doing too many combos in the end game, than it is to be not doing enough combos in the end game, because that's how you drop close ones when you're trying to figure out your end game and you're just committing so many moves to getting the, the viruses exposed meanwhile your opponent's stun locking you for 40 seconds because they dropped five combos of you at once and it covered the perfect uh column that you needed and now your end game is ruined and uh they just gained so much your opponent just gained so much momentum off of that you really can never let up even in situations like that that might have been a little overkill waiting for the, the, the fat log but i think that's less of a mistake than trying to be too passive and just going for it too early and giving up on combos too soon. So that's just that's just how I feel about it. Anyway, that's the end of that one. Um, so this next game is going to be a game. This is the this is the uh, a crown that I, I lose this next one. And this is the game I wanted to see the most because I feel like you can learn the most from losing the games that you've lost and trying to figure out what you could have done differently. So I'm, we're going to do that in this game and see if there was a way I could have gotten out of this. This uh, You'll see I get into like a big, long situation at the top of the screen, um, and I never really get out of it, and I eventually top out, do a misdrop, I think. But we'll we'll get into it. Let's just get to the game. OK, 
Okay, this is the first uh, opening move. Now, this is definitely not an obvious one. And honestly, I don't even remember what I did. I have to assume I probably just did the double red in column four. But that's not great. It doesn't make a combo setup. If I manage to clear it away, I now have like very little access to red. Um, so it's possible that a better move is just to go like this and just make the edge clear. Um, you could also go like this and maybe stack up and hope to get like some sort of double yellow horizontal setup. But the problem with that is that you can't get it right away if you get the yellow pills you need. This blue is in the way and we're about to start with a double red. So we don't know if a blue is going to come in time to clear this away and get this. It'll probably just take too long to resolve a setup like this and we'll end up getting punished and in the early game by doing that. And it'll lead to a situation where you get like a lot of uh, blocked off issues at the start and you're stuck at the top of the screen and I just try to avoid that situation as much as possible because I find it's just really difficult to come back from that. And the more experienced and the more skilled your opponent is, the harder it is because they will not let up on you. You'll just keep getting garbage drops for the rest of the game, sitting there at the top of the screen trying to dig it out. And it's just a mess. So I don't. I think this opening move is kind of sending you down that path and I, I wouldn't advise it. But let's see what I actually do and what Pangolin does here. Now oh, we both go for the, the obvious move. I still think maybe this edge clear is better, but but uh, I I mean we're about to get a double red. I'm assuming we're both going to clear this virus out. Yeah, only problem with this being that we don't have access to reds, but this yellow red will have a good spot. So let's see how this plays out. I, I can't see this being a sweep. I mean it's certainly mathematically. And we both we both get the double, but I get there a little quicker. So far. I get this horizontal, but I didn't get a combo out of it, and I think I could have. This yellow blue, this okay, this blue yellow probably should have gone here. As risky as this is, this blue yellow definitely should have been like this. Because now I've got a loaded setup. I just need reds to to knock it down. So I think, yeah, this blue yellow should not have gone over to the left. That was a mistake. Definitely. Because then this this would have been a combo I would have gone. And I have another opportunity, and instead I just do this double stack. I should put it here. Now I know I'm going to about to get the red to clear it out. It's going to be the perfect pill, too. So there's literally no risk to doing this and just setting up a triple as opposed to nothing. So that was a huge mistake, honestly, to, to miss this in the opening like that. And now I get blocked here, and that's it's really not good. I also have, like, no access to red, so... If I start to get red pills now, that's going to be really bad because I'm just going to be stuck here forever. I don't need, in this case with this blue yellow, I don't even know what we should do. Maybe you just take the combo. I assume that's what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to do it wrong and do it like this and just get an empty combo when I could maybe make this move that I'm now seeing. And then these blues will actually clear out a virus and knock things down a little further and even set me up with like a nice little blue yellow double stack situation. Um, but even beyond that, Maybe I'm just supposed to deal with this yellow garbage that's about to hit. Because this is a real problem. Oh, I'm I'm about to get a... Wait, what? Am I... I thought I had a blue-yellow in the next box. Am I crazy? Oh. oh, sorry. I do. It just... I think that was just like a weird frame where the blue-yellow wasn't on the screen. But uh, this double red's gonna suck. So, um, yeah. Let's see what I do from here. Yeah, I do the combo wrong like I thought. I definitely should have taken the drop time and gotten like an actual virus, exposed some red, had a better setup, clear out the edge. Yeah, I mean, the it's not that bad. It's a combo, but um, now I'm in a position where I need to probably be doing better than just these empty combos, even this early on. So yeah, I regret that move for sure. Double red like that. I end up taking that blue horizontally, and I guess it's just because I know this yellow is an issue, and I know I can't get rid of it easily especially if i'm getting double blues it's possible i could have put it somewhere else maybe um like this hoping to get a combo but i think i just wanted to get the yellow down it does allow me to get like an l clear with it so that's probably what i was thinking this might just be a fine move but now i'm getting like blue reds i have to clear down i go for the l i'm getting garbage dropped on me but like now i have this red here in the center that's not great I don't think that was avoidable. Yeah, it was just garbage that just happened to fall. So now I'm just kind of hoping. I probably shouldn't have put that over there. I probably should have contributed to uh, getting rid of this red. Wow, I played this really badly, actually. Way worse than I thought. <laughs> I made a lot of mistakes here. Um, I should have definitely 
contributed to, even if it's in column five and it's a little dangerous to stack it up i don't really have a choice uh i should have just probably started building towards getting rid of this red but uh obviously i didn't do that so let's see how this goes instead i think i'm gonna do a t here yeah don't that it drops this red down a bit tricky but now this blue blocks this off this red these reds and makes an awful spire and this is so high up it's I can't clear it vertically. I don't have any way to do it horizontal unless I build up on this double setup I have. Uh, things are just not looking good right now. Put that down there. Gotta make plans take care. Yeah, I just I think I I'm desperately trying to make a horizontal here. Hopefully I can make a combo out of it and just chop this down really slowly. And as long as I'm making combos, hopefully that's good enough. I assume that's what we're thinking here. Right away, both of them sort of slowing yeah, down a tiny. And bit. I get a triple out of it. And now I want this oh, double so blue or this blue useful. horizontal. Yeah, time to break that down. Good. Lev going horizontally. I didn't want it to end like that. Oh, and then I thought double red was unfortunate. I guess I could have put it. I don't even know. That double red just came at a really bad time. I guess I'm supposed to put it like over here, but I didn't really think. I was a little scared maybe of getting it over this double yellow at this stage. But this clearing this out was really not great. I mean, I could have even put it like horizontally like this and that might have been better clearing this out probably was again a big mistake Honestly. i didn't want it to end like that yeah oh no that would because now i can't even want. i can't even make it horizontally here and also not so in, i just uh, clear this blue away it's not contributing to a combo or anything so we just get rid of it now i have this yellow setup that i've kind of made for myself it's not even loaded on the red side of things and i i'm so blocked from being able to clear it uh i assume this double yellow is going to go in the pit here but yeah, this is not a good board, and I feel like it could have been avoided for sure. Definitely a lot to learn here. Oh wow, I did that. That was that was a huge mistake. I can't believe I did that. Double yellow here. I guess I'm thinking this makes a setup, but then I don't even get the clear. Even then, this double yellow could have, second double yellow could have gone in the pit. And if we go back, like the double yellow goes down here, then red yellow here makes a combo, and then any other red pill just drops it. I could even put a red blue here if I wanted, and that would be better. But instead I do it this way and I get no combo at all. Yeah, I really choked this one. Yeah, not, not really going for combos at the moment, just trying to I don't know what that was. I should have let this fall. Why don't I want anything to go in column three? Why did I do yeah, that? Not really going for Yeah, putting it like this, like it should have just been should have just been like that. Just drop the yellow onto the yellow. Instead I'm making garbage in my center column. Jeez. That's rough combos at the moment just trying to break this down a little bit at a wow. time kind of getting a double she at least so oh that was huge too i see this cross and i think about taking it but i know it's not going to make a combo and i see the double yellow coming easily could have just gone here and said i put it on column two and i traffic light myself that's just wow definitely not ideal yeah a lot to learn i don't know I mean, it was a long day. Maybe it was just... I even shake my head. I knew when I did this right away that it was no good. But it is what it is. All the way to column one. I'll get the cross. and Oh, this board just never seems to get into a comfortable position. But I'm kind of doing it to myself, I guess. Now I'm setting up this horizontal that doesn't have anything to resolve it. And I know I'm just like yeah, her floundering here. On the far left and far right sides of the board. I very much envy that. Very that fast. Takes confidence. Yeah. Oh, I should have just cleared this horizontal. I'm getting desperately trying to make a combo here, but this is so like rough. Like, I should have just cleared this out. Yeah, I would have done so many things differently if I could have replayed this game. My She's God, lead, and just not and finding zero combos. Literally can't find a single one. She's getting out of it, Sam. Yeah, definitely. Lev's board tricky with all this red yellow, and I think there was possibly a play for some horizontals up top, taking out the right hand side, but it was very difficult. He's just all of these clears. I haven't gotten a combo in like over forty seconds of play, I think, and that's just not where you want to be. Even in a situation like this, you have to find a way to make a combo out of it, just to like keep the pressure on your opponent. And I, I'm just not doing that. Bit by bit. Look at this. Oh, oh, my goodness. Nice combo from Pangolin. Pangolin is a wizard. Those pieces just disappeared. Leviticus is in major trouble here. 
Yeah, I mean, I, finally I get a combo after like a full minute or something. <laughs> then that's rough. Yeah, that's the amazing thing about these matches between elite players is it is definitely not over until it's over until you see the char the you know the character die in the fantasy novel like yeah. <laughs> they are not dead. The momentum swings are incredible. Yeah, it's amazing. And look at that. I'm just breaking things stuff. down. Now this is the misdrop that kills me, and I don't know if I like. So what I meant to do when I did this obviously was to like go like that, get a get a not even a combo, but just to clear it down. I want to see, did the speed pick up on that exact pill? And is that what threw me off here? I'm trying to see. Let me go back. No, I was at dead. speed 41 the whole time. I just incredible. did not yeah, flip the amazing. pill the way I and meant look at to. That Lev bringing all that yeah, the pill just didn't flip. And I don't know why. Stuff down oh, no. And then the second pill, I wasn't ready for it. I thought I was about to get it clear. So I wasn't ready for the pill to come out. And it just went in like the next worst spot. No, no. So I definitely don't recover from this. I do oh, give it my best shot, but there's no way. So yeah. So yeah, wow, a lot to learn from that game. That was uh, unfortunate. I yeah, <laughs> uh, definitely a lot of plays. I even in the moment now, like I, it felt like if I replayed it, I could have seen different moves in the moment than I did. Um, but I mean, that's just how it goes. Sometimes you just make different decisions in the moment, but some of them are really questionable. Like I don't even know what I was thinking with some of those plays. But uh, we all have games like that, so you know, I'm gonna try to not be too hard on myself about it. But there were a lot of things I could have done differently. Um, I spent way too long in the second half of that game just not making any combos where I definitely had opportunities that I just didn't see. Maybe I was panicking a little bit, trying to make, trying to recover the situation, and I just couldn't. That could be what part of what happened. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, it's just you know take it as a learning experience and move on. Um, definitely should have made some different choices, um, basically at all stages of that game. Um, even when I put myself in a bad situation, I think I could have pulled out of it better if I had just, uh, made some better choices and it's hard to, tr to do that in the moment, but, um, you just gotta, you know, expect better of yourself and, uh, try to do it. So yeah, uh, that's a perfect example of what happens when you, uh, when you don't properly address like some early garbage, um, and things just kind of don't go your way just enough and, and you don't, uh, um, address it the way you should, but, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about that one. Let's uh, move on to the next game. It's our last game. Let's just close this out here. Okay, opening move. It's just going to be a blue-yellow here, I think. Um, this is another one of those obvious openings. We're just going to go for the double stack, try to get first combo, and see where the pills take us from there. Two to one. Still match point for Leviticus. Could we get the reverse sweep? Wow. Love those... Uh, love those... Uh, double uh or those simultaneous moves just like the synchronized openings so cool that's probably my favorite thing about versus i love it after mario <laughs> <laughs> so now that this blue is here i really hope i'm thinking about getting a horizontal so ideally the play here would be like red blue yellow blue you'd get a sick combo maybe you this double red coming will go on top here. I wouldn't be surprised if that's how this ends up playing out, but let's see. Oh. Okay, I end up doing this. Uh, I take the double, even though it breaks the, the platform that I had for this horizontal. Um, I don't think that that in and of itself was a bad move. Loved getting combos, especially in the early game. Super cool. Uh, probably correct to take it. But now that we've done that, the number one priority here is building back up to this cl to clear it away as soon as possible. I don't want to let this linger, especially given that it's in column four. Uh, I don't want stuff to build up on top of it. Uh, I definitely don't want um, the edge to get messy either. So I just want to clear this big setup that's taking up space at the top of my screen to make more space for myself. Um, and uh, we just need to be doing that almost at any cost. Like I'll make garbage if I have to just to build up to this and, and get the horizontal here. And as you can see, garbage already falling up here. So now it's even more dire. Uh, if I get two more combos that fall here, I'm dead. So we absolutely have to clear this blue horizontal way as soon as possible at basically any cost here. And I'm putting blue on top of red. yellow, blue on yellow on top of red. I don't care. We're just building to this. And I'll probably put this red blue just like that, even though I've made a bunch of garbage per se. It's still worth it just to get rid of this blue here, I think. So... Uh, I'm sure, yeah, there that's what I end up he's doing. Got it with the double. 
So now I'm left with this sort of situation, but I would take this over having uh, this setup go awry any day. Uh, I just wanted to get it out of there as soon as possible. Bread underneath. But the scaffolding that would build up to that sometimes could just add problems on top of the original problems. And I take another combo and then I clear the center out, even though this is an empty clear center. Safety in the center is so important. That is like the number one reason to do an empty clear is at, in the early game is to just like make sure you don't die. It's, uh, I mean, if you die, you lose the game on the spot. So how could that not be worth it, right? <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely something um, that you can do, uh, even if it's not, you know, get a combo if you can. Always get a combo if you can, but definitely uh, needed to get that safety in the center on that one. Uh, if Hagelin, that also not in the best oh, oh no oh, oh. he couldn't get it over to column one that I think be it. there's not much more to say I'm pretty sure Penguin surely tops out here uh, she's, uh, oh, man, she, she could be selling blow. it yeah and there wasn't much else to say that was a really quick one I, forget, I remember it being a bit longer than that but unfortunately she just tops out there uh and uh and that's it and then we we, we win the original uh kind of an uneventful game for definitely uh I think Texas is a lot more exciting, <laughs> exciting final game. But, you know, we take those, uh, you know, you, you play well and, and uh, you get the win. So, you know, it can't always be a super epic finish or whatever. But, uh, yeah, that was uh, a solid game, especially after that third game. I feel like I really redeemed myself here. So that's good. But, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, that fourth game or the third game, excuse me, definitely had the most to learn here. Um, just so many, like, just so many questionable decisions, and it's a perfect example of how small mistakes snowball into being huge problems. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have had games like that where, you know, things just don't seem to work out for you, and and things just don't build up right, and you never really get the exact pill you want, and and felt like there was nothing you could do. But if you go back and look, if you have the ability to do so, I think most people would find if they look back and thought about it, there's always something different you can do. There's almost always a way out of any situation, barring like really unfortunate garbage, really unlucky garbage. Um, you can almost always recover the situation. Um, yeah, I was, well, I don't know if you're here earlier, exact same, but I was saying this is a quality tournament. We had some amazing play. I think people really enjoyed it. I think that uh, the play in versus is getting higher than ever. I feel like when these monthly checkup regulars like Pangolin and Perula and Steve S and and all of them are, are going out to these regionals and Rob Burrito when we're all coming out to these tournaments and, and after maybe some of them haven't even been seen since like Columbus of last year, the rise in average skill in the scene has, is just making these regionals really hype. I feel like even myself, like between Texas and Hartford, I feel like I improved a lot. I feel like I cleaned up my play quite a bit. Um, and I was, became a much stronger player. And I think, but I think everyone's doing that. I feel like most people have, seen a, a sizable improvement even since january not to mention since november last year so um i think that made this tournament really uh entertaining and i think it's going to make november insanely hype i can't wait to see some of the matches we're going to get live in columbus oh my god i'm gonna i can't wait dude it's only two months away oh it's gonna be so good but anyway uh that's gonna be the end of the uh of the vod review there i hope uh everybody had uh had fun i hope, hope you guys learned something i this is not like a return to regular vod reviews or anything like that uh, i think uh, i'll probably just do these as they come as as uh as it feels uh relevant uh thanks thanks for the thanks in the chat guys yeah columbus should be nuts uh exact same if you ever come to columbus that'll be the best tournament of all time let's put it that way <laughs> no pressure <laughs> but anyway uh yeah, uh, Columbus is going to be great. I can't wait. Like I said at the top of the stream, if you can get there somehow, please go. It'll be worth it, I promise. I absolutely promise you, you will have a wonderful time and you will not regret it. All these tournaments have set the stage, or setting the stage for like an incredible year. This is going to be the best year of Versus ever. The best season, if you will, like from November to November, this is going to be the best one there's ever been. And I cannot wait until we get to see that. I'm going to call it there. Thank you guys all for watching. If and everyone on YouTube, be safe, stay warm, and uh, don't skip it on your monthly checkup. And we'll see you next time.